to everyone hope you are doing good welcome to the online lecture on interpretation of statutes today's topic of discussion is presumptions in statutory interpretations in the last session we discussed what are statutes what are the various types of statutes and in continuation to that today's topic that is presumptions in statutory interpretations let's straight away move to the topic let's start by discussing what are the various presumptions in uh, statutory interpretations so these are the major seven presumptions regarding statutory interpretation the first is presumption as to validity the second one is presumption as to nature and operation the third one is presumption regarding jurisdiction the fourth one is presumption against intending injustice the fifth one is presumption against what is inconvenient and absurd the sixth one is presumption against impairing obligation and the seventh one is uh, presumption against retrospective operation in today's session we will discuss up to presumption against intending injustice and in the next session we will continue with the rest let's start by discussing what is presumption as to validity so all statutes are presumed to be valid legal and acceptable no matter who has enacted the statute whether it is a central government or the state government has uh, whether any of the government has enacted this particular any particular statutes all the statutes are generally presumed to be valid they are presumed uh, are also legal and acceptable however the validity of any statutes is not absolute and they can be rebutted by providing or producing evidence which is legal and which is admissible in the eyes of law then on the basis of that evidence the question over the validity of statutes can be asked but otherwise in general statutes are presumed to be valid and legal the second presumption is presumption as to nature and operation so statutes are territorial in nature and operation what do we mean by territorial that the statutes are in a, uh, enacted in a country and then they are applicable in that particular country so a statute is generally has an effect only in the country where they have been enacted so general so this is what uh, is the presumption as to nature and operation that statutes are territorial in nature now there is a case regarding this which will help us understand this better there is a case by the name gwalior dugd sang sankari limited versus general manager government milk scheme nagpur so the there was a dispute in this case and it was held that the provision for reference of any dispute to registrar under mp cooperative societies act does not apply to the disputes relating to a contract entered into outside the state of madhya pradesh so in order to refer the dispute to the registrar of mp cooperative societies act the contract which is under dispute must be entered within the state of madhya pradesh not outside it so that is how we say that that particular statute this particular mp cooperative societies act is territorial in nature and it will apply only in the state of madhya pradesh so this is how statutes are territorial in nature now uh, the another one is presumption as to jurisdiction this is a very important presumption statutes generally do not enlarge or decrease the jurisdiction of any court so by the help of any statutes or any statutes that has been enacted by the central or the state government they do not generally they do not generally enlarge any jurisdiction of the court or they do not uh, decrease the jurisdiction of any court they should not be construed so as to to take away the jurisdiction of superior courts or to extend the jurisdiction by giving a right to appeal now they never really extend the jurisdiction of any superior court or by giving the right to appeal to anybody that by extending the jurisdiction by by giving the right to appeal and they do not take away any jurisdiction of any superior courts however if at all there is any statute that is expressly giving jurisdiction to any subordinate courts 
or tribunals or government agencies how they can be statutes we are not stating here that such they, they cannot be any statutes that can enhance or uh, or decrease the jurisdiction of any court we are just by this presumption as to jurisdiction we are just stating that they generally do not enlarge or decrease the jurisdiction of any court but any statute expressly stating that a particular jurisdiction is being given to a subordinate court or tribunal or government agencies is valid enough is fair enough but it should be strictly construed it should be strictly applied and when by uh, by granting a jurisdiction it is implied that all the powers are granted which is necessary for the execution of any order so by granting a jurisdiction to subordinate courts or tribunals or government agencies through a statute all the powers are expressly granted to these different subordinate courts and tribunals so as they can be able to execute any order for which they have been granted jurisdiction so what do we understand by presumption regarding jurisdiction it is just that they generally do not enlarge or decrease the jurisdiction of any court however if any statute is expressly granting any jurisdiction to any court then they not just granting the jurisdiction merely but they are granting all the powers as well which is required for the execution of any order we will understand this case uh through this case we will understand presumption regarding jurisdiction with the help of this case the case name is gujarat state cooperative land development bank versus pr mankad gujarat state cooperative land development bank versus pr mankad now uh, i'm not going to in, into the details of the case just explaining you the main points here which will help you understand what to what is presumption regarding jurisdiction so not really going into how a particular case analysis is done the facts the issues raised and how the proper judgment was done just going through a brief so here the appellant terminated the services of the respondent and the respondent challenged his termination on the ground that the termination is illegal and it related to the activities of trade union now the appellant contended that only the registrar under the gujarat cooperative societies act which is applicable uh, to the bank gujarat state cooperative land development bank in question has jurisdiction of this case and the labor codes under bombay industrial relation act does not have the jurisdiction uh, uh, for this case of this case so we are clear up till now the appellant terminated the service of the uh, services of the respondent and the respondent then challenged the termination on the ground that the termination is illegal and it pertained to some activities related to trade union the appellants contended that the registrar under the gujarat cooperative societies act only he has jurisdiction over this matter and not the labor courts under bihar uh, sorry under bombay industrial relation act the supreme court the matter went up to the supreme court and the supreme court held that the dispute in this case is an industrial dispute under bombay industrial relation act and not mere enforcement of some civil rights arising from a contract of enforcement so the supreme court held that the dispute between the respondent and the appellant amounts to an industrial dispute and not some civil right infringement that arises out of a contract violation the contract the terms of contract violation so such right can only be enforced by a labor court which is competent to grant relief of reinstatement as claimed by the respondent and supreme court held that since it is an industrial dispute and and therefore the industrial dispute can definitely go up to the labor court and which is a competent court to grant relief of reinstatement as claimed by the respondent so that is how we say that regarding the jurisdiction any statute uh, the, the statute in question here was gujarat cooperative societies act and bombay industrial relation act so appellant was stating that uh, this particular statute is territorial in nature and it uh, the dispute regarding gujarat cooperative societies act would go up to the registrar but the respondent said the respondent 
under the statute Bombay Industrial Relation Act went up to the Labor Court and Supreme Court held that the jurisdiction of this court is valid enough and they are competent to grant relief of reinstatement. So Gujarat Cooperative Society, uh, Gujarat Cooperative uh, State Cooperative Land Development Bank versus P.R. Mankat is a very important judgment re regarding presumption as to jurisdiction. Now we move on to the fourth presumption presumption against intending injustice. What is this? Statutes are for the purpose of serving justice to all and to remove any injustice. However, if there is any injustice because of statute itself, then person would be compensated. Then the concerned person would be compensated. For example, if a statute deprives a person of his property, he is to be compensated for its value. See, statutes, the main purpose of any statutes is to serve justice, to prevail justice and to remove any injustice which is there. Now, if because of the statute itself any injustice is being done, then what will happen? Then the person would be compensated. Then the person would be compensated because of the violation, because of the infringement or injustice that has been done, that has been inflicted upon him because of the uh, enactment of the statute itself. Now, for example, if a statute deprives a person of his property, he is to be compensated for its value. We will understand this statement. We know that the, we know the concept of eminent domain that the, all the property belongs to state and state can claim the property any time it wants for any use of public good, for public good. Now, if, some, if, if a state order comes up and it asks me to vacate a particular land and I have to give that particular land to state, the state will not just take away my land but it will compensate me the value of that particular land. However, if we go by the concept of eminent domain, eminent domain, this is a concept in, uh, this is a concept which states that all the property, all the land belongs to state. The, the king, the state is the king. So, uh, the state by say, saying that the, uh, by the applying the uh, doctrine of eminent domain, the state will never give me compensation and will say that this is my land and I am taking it away from you. So, why give value? Why you should be compensated? But no. So, this is the presumption against intending injustice that if any injustice is done by the application of any statute itself, then that particular statute would also be uh, for that injustice that is being done the person would be compensated so uh, this is presumption against injustice now uh, there is a case as well regarding this uh, this is a case of state of Punjab versus Kesar Jahan Begum uh, if you guys remember, we discussed it in the introductory session of inter interpretation of statutes that we done. We discussed this case. Now, under let us understand this once again. But how the presumption against intending injustice is applied in this case? Here, you all must remember. Uh, uh, section 18 of Land Acquisition Act 1894 was under question and it stated that no reference can be made beyond six months after passing of the award. So section 18 of Land Acquisition Act was under question. Uh, it stated that no reference can be made beyond six months after passing of the award. Now the reference in this case by the respondent was done within six months of the knowledge which was beyond the six months after passing of the award. So the reference by the respondent was made within six months, but it was within six months from the date of the knowledge. But that particular time frame was beyond six months after passing of the award. Now the court, the matter went up in the court and the court said that if literal interpretation of statute is done, which is Land Acquisition Act, if literal interpretation is done, then justice would not prevail. And the court, by going by the principles of fair play and natural justice, the court held that if someone does not have the knowledge, how will he file the reference? So if anybody does not, do not have any knowledge about the passing of the award, how will he appeal against the, uh, that particular, particular award? How will he uh, refer the matter in, in the court? 
so the court held that the purpose of any statute is to ensure justice and intending injustice should be avoided here so if the court would not would not have allowed the appeal which was done within 6 months of the knowledge the court would have followed the statute itself that is section 18 of land and acquisition act no in, no uh, no uh, problem regarding that the court would have following the plain words of the statute but if it would uh, the court would have done that then injustice would prevail because how any because uh, how would anyone file a case without having the knowledge so the court by assuming presumption against intending injustice the court here held that the purpose of any statute is to ensure justice and intending injustice should be avoided here so with this i conclude uh, today's session we discussed four presumptions presumptions regarding validity all statutes are presumed to be valid presumptions regarding nature and operation statutes are territorial in nature presumption regarding jurisdiction uh, it stated that no statutes uh, either enlarge or decrease the jurisdiction of any court however they can be statutes which give jurisdiction to subordinate courts and by just granting the jurisdiction they give all the powers to the court which is necessary for the execution of any order and then this presumption against intending injustice so we discussed this as well state of punjab versus kaisar jahan begum this becomes a very important case in interpretation of statutes itself so with this i conclude today's session if you have any doubt regarding uh, this uh, any these particular uh, presumptions please write down in the comments and i'll try and solve uh, and i'll try and conduct a session a separate session regarding all the doubt clearing so thank you very much have a nice day